the whole setup would look if um, someone is working on his GitHub repository of Hyper. This is what you've seen already. It's just the central Git repository on our server. And the client still pulls and pushes there. That, of course, this implies that you have permit access to the central repository. And um, this is a, well, let's say my, uh, my repository that I've just um, pulled from the GitHub um, Haiku Mirror. Well, they call it fork, right? Um, it's just um, a fork of our um, a mirror repository. And I can ju I just pull that into the same Git repository, like I have different um, um, branch names for that then. And on top of that, well, in this, I can, I can just, in here, I just add new branches for my um, own development, like picture branches or whatever they are, and then push them, whatever I think I want to share that, I push that onto the GitHub. So, and there, then other people can join me, can have a look at that, and it's even possible I can you know, give other developers access to my repository, so we can, there can be rules and stuff. And then, if a feature like this is supposed to be done, you can either commit it yourself or push it yourself if you um, have the rights or ask someone to have a look at it. One problem that uh, can trigger is that that works on a client machine in your room, basically. Nobody really, I mean, GitHub. Um, has some features uh, to see what others are doing, but it's a bit, they don't push. It just you basically have to pull this information, and we are pretty much used to having a commit list, which well shows what's going on. Mm -hmm. And especially one we already experienced that when uh, Ingo was doing the package management development in a GitHub branch in the GitHub repository. And nobody saw anything really, unless they explicitly followed that. And that's really bad. It's especially bad um, for external developers because any, uh, well, more experienced Haiku developers only get a chance to look at their code when they say, hey, have a look at my repository, I'm done. So it would be much better if they could just say, you know, um, I, I'm interested, I'd like to work. Here's my repository. Can I just, you know, kind of uh, merge my changes into the general change set commit stream, so everybody can see what's going on, and then can comment on those changes early on. And um, it's not yet really clear. I mean, how to how to actually do that? I mean, what what solutions? This one that we. Um, could, we could use tracker or bug tracker and add a, well, an attribute or something like that where every uh, track user can register one or more repository, GitHub repositories, whatever, and we automatically would pull from those repositories to see what has changed and then introduce a new uh, commits mailing list like I could commits community, whatever, and send out any community changes, external changes to that list. So. If someone's not interested in the whole what the community does, it just um, subscribes to the general hypercommits list and that's it. But somebody interested in uh, everything else has a chance to at least get there. I don't really know. I mean, they might, they are on GitHub, at least GitHub, they do offer other means, I mean, like um, RSS S feeds, which might be okay to get the same information. So we could, but I personally found it very uh, a very good idea to really set up a mailing list and push everything in there. And it's just more a question of how to get the data. Yeah, that's also what we take even right to the RSS feed. Yeah, sure, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because the discussion is an important part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, um, Linus did a one-hour presentation on Git when he uh, was at Google at some point. Yeah. And he really, uh, his main point with, uh, he was one of the main developers of Git, and he really thought that, well, I don't pull from everyone. I'm not going to pull random people's patches and updates into my, uh, into my, into my little repository. Mm -hmm. And he only pulls from a few guys that he trusts for a few certain subsets of Linux. Sure. So there's this networking guy in the vessel that network management. He knows more about networks. So he knows <coughs> when somebody did something strange or bad. So um, Linus just got digests from that chain. And probably whenever there's, there would be subgroups and there would be. Mm -hmm. So there's a sort of a hierarchy in where, from where you push and where you pull. And within that same hierarchy that you're going to get, because this is all distributed, you can have alternate means of communicating your, well, your, your roadmap. Because Linux will just think, Linux, Linux himself would just think, well, networking needs this uh, extra big function and that will split it up into separate groups. And that way, that, that layer of that abstraction will scale really well. So, sure, and the thing is, I'm sure that um, when you have just one big chain of everything <laughs> happening in the community, that's something that's gonna, that's gonna be too much. That's right, for sure. The thing is, is our group big enough <coughs> to actually, I mean, I don't know, I mean, like, for Linux development, of course, that is <coughs> a different range, and mm -hmm. for us, um, I think it's most important that we find a good environment that can um, sustain both modes of development, like, especially GitHub and Notorious, they kind of, because they give you us free repositories, free grouping and stuff, we could really do that. I mean, once we, if things go really well, and we have lots of new developments, and this one is really, you know, 1,000 messages per day, then it doesn't work. So we need, then we could just separate that into whatever, community network or whatever, just separate groups or just, or even, um, <coughs> stop feeding it into a central place. Let the groups decide what they want. But currently, I think we just we're not big enough. We have to try, of course. Maybe that changes really fast. I don't know. But I'd suggest to go with this kind of model and see how it goes. If it doesn't work out, we can change. But it's a good thing. I mean, we need to make sure that the setup is good enough to support um, a much um, more hierarchical structure of development. And I think it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when do we switch? I think I was talking about a year ago, more than a year ago. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I said the same thing, I suppose. Um, Yes, uh, well, basically, most of it works, of course. Uh, we even um, we managed to get rid of performance problems that we triggered with GitHub and Gitorious, with tags, 40,000 lightweight tags. We're not so lightweight <laughs> after all. Um, so I simply deleted them from GitHub and Gitorious, which means that if you're not interested in the revision tags, you don't have to deal with them. You can just pull from Gitorious and work there, or you just, you could even do that with um, our tree because nobody forces you to pull the tags. You can just leave them. But at least Gitorious and, um, and the GitHub website now work as they should, which is uh, a requirement for getting, getting other developers in because they can't use the site they want and they will give up on us. <laughs> And yeah, what's, what needs to be done still is um, we need to integrate Git properly with track, which basically means um, the change set browser in track it is slow already um, because its main um, calls for uh, overload of VM and the respective VM. Um, so uh, I'd like to replace that with CGit which is a decent uh, browser, a repository browser. 
that just works. And the timeline, um, as Niels has just pointed out to me, the timeline uh, of the track is a bit rather confused, but if you push um, the feature branch that took you, let's say, three months to work on, and all those commits which are spread throughout these three months and to track, they will sprinkle along all over the timeline. And so you, you don't, you, in the end, you just see, oh, yesterday there was the merge commit, all right. And um, what else? And the timer doesn't tell you unless you scroll back to each commit. And would be better to um, base the timeline on the pushes and all the change sets that came in with that push. So you can have a look at that. You see the feature branch, what did it contain, and stuff like that. So that's, um, and we would have to find out how that can be done. Should be so difficult, but. There's some magic in time. There, there is magic possibility. Right. And um, what the other thing that I need to do is I need to collect uh, links about these and the tutorials because it's a new tool. Many people have already complained about it. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. and um, so we really need to one, I hope to, well, find <coughs> one decent tutorial that I can just.